Hey everyone, I'm Jack with Riverjack Studio, and after my short to medium length hiatus, I finally have another video for you all. So I was cutting up a bag of mesquite wood that I got from Lowe's on sale for like 50 cents. The bag was extremely weathered, and I don't think anybody had bought any, and that's why it was on sale for so cheap. Normally I think the bag would have been like 15 or $20, so quite the steal for 50 cents. Mesquite is super dense and makes great wood to use in a smoker, which is what I was going to use it for. I started to come up some of the pieces to use as kindling to start cooking some ribs, but then I kept noticing just how tight the grain was. And after I split it, I could actually see the color that hadn't been oxidized away by sitting in the bag. So I was kind of looking at it for a while and I realized I needed another project and I thought I could make something cool out of it. So after looking at it for a while and wondering what I could make out of such short pieces, I settled on some cooking utensils. I took some of the usable pieces over to my workbench and I began jointing one side of the logs. Usually you can just rough cut the pieces on a bandsaw before putting them on the joiner, but my bandsaw is both very old and borrowed and it doesn't really like to cut pieces over an inch thick, even after a new blade and adjusting every single guide and tensioner on it. So I just make do with what I have and I take about a 30 second of a pass off and usually it takes about 20 passes before I can get a clean enough side. I joint all the usable pieces I have and some of the logs were just either checked or had cracks running through the whole diameter or like this piece was just rotten throughout and due to bore holes. Once I joint one side of every single piece I had, I then put that jointed side up on the face of my guide and flatten the adjacent side of the log. So now I'll have a perfectly flat 90 degree angled piece. I do this so I can cut the final blank on my table saw. I then go to set up my guide on my table saw. Some of the pieces are a little tall and my blade won't be able to cut it in half on one pass. So to be able to cut everything in half, I have to flatten the opposite side of the joint to make sure I have a large enough flat surface to use on both sides. I use the tried and true eyeballing it method, uh, which seems to work for me about 99% of the time. I run a couple of the pieces through that I know will be too big and I can't get in one pass. I then send everything through my table saw. The majority of the utensils will be about 3 eighths of an inch thick, while the spoon I'm going to make will be about 3 quarters of an inch thick. I try to cut two blanks for each piece to use so I end up with more than what I actually need. These pieces are quite checked, so I know there will be some pieces that I have to pitch and end up using for the smoke box for cooking. After everything is cut, I make sure to find the pieces with the least number of cracks and that are the right dimensions for the utensils I'm trying to make. I then settled on the five best pieces and begin to sketch out my designs. I didn't have to be super precise. The only thing I was really worried about was making sure that the handles and some of the heads were symmetrical. I'm pretty good with shaping and I've spent a lot of time using carving discs and low grit sanders. So I was pretty confident I'd be able to get what I wanted out of these pieces. And if I did screw up somewhere along the way, I always had more pieces I could use. After I had the general layout and design, I then headed over to my bandsaw to rough cut the final shape into these mesquite blanks. This bandsaw is a Craftsman series and was actually loaned to me from my neighbor. And it was actually his father's bandsaw. And my neighbor is in his late 60s, so that helps put in respect of how old this thing is. He loaned it to me and I think it might be more of a permanent loan at this point because he never asked <laughs> about giving it back to him which I'm super thankful for because if I had to go buy a new bandsaw, I'd probably cry myself to sleep. I think he just loaded it to me so he wouldn't feel bad about coming into the shop and seeing what I was working on. Terry is kind of the old guy who has forgotten more than I'll ever probably know. He used to make cabinetry full time and has done dozens of grandfather and grandmother clocks over the years. He's also the head of maintenance for the city before he retired, so he definitely knows a lot more than I probably ever will. My dad and I are always constantly bugging him to help on him projects and get advice, so he's pretty much the perfect neighbor to have. I cut these five pieces out pretty quickly, and from firewood to rough shape only took about three hours, which really isn't that bad at all. What is bad, however, is how crammed into this back corner I am. My shop is only a one-car garage, and if I have more than one project going on in here, it gets super tight. 
So as you can see, uh, and with this hilarious angle, I've pushed myself as far as I can into this corner to be able to fit and work on these couple pieces. After I'm finished with the bandsaw, I shove it back in the corner and I head over to my belt sander. And by head over, I mean I literally take one step to my right. <laughs> the belt that's on the sander is 60 grit, so it removes material pretty quickly. And so since this is the first step in the sanding process, I have to make sure the utensil is in constant motion and I don't apply too much pressure in one spot. This first piece that I'm working on is a curved spatula, which I have a plastic version of. It's basically just a long piece that bulges out at the ends in a semicircle. I pretty much just picked the five most used utensils in my kitchen and just turned them into wooden set. The next piece I have is a standard spatula with one curved side at the head. Like the first piece, I just shaved down the edge so it's easy to slide underneath food in a pan. The third piece in my set is a scraper, and as you see, I just 45 it in so you can use it to scrape out food. And I use it occasionally to stir around vegetables or anything else in a pan. My second to last piece is a thin spoon that I'll modify later on, use to stir foods or use in saucepans. I later add some holes to the face so that it can be used to strain liquid as you stir. And the last piece is going to be a spoon. I made it much thicker than the rest of the pieces because I was going to concave the head out using this tungsten head from Cutsaw. It's basically just a round piece of metal that has a bunch of burrs on it and is powered by an air chuck. This works well to remove material and I have similar discs that I use on my larger angle grinders for bigger projects. After the face of the piece is shaped in, I then grab my other stirring spoon and head over to my drill press. I just used the smallest forstner bit I have, which I think was an eighth of an inch, and I drill out nine holes that I pre-measured out. I then use the same cut saw head and give the face more of a concave spoon shape, it, although it's not as severe as the other spoons. After I have the general idea for those spoons ironed out, I grab another tool. This time it's a angle grinder sander attachment for concave surfaces, which is great because I wouldn't be able to fit my regular random orbit sander in that such of a small space. It basically just takes a piece of round sandpaper and it mounts it through the center on the end of this chuck. And it also has a random orbit feature in it as well. I honestly thought I'd just use it once when I bought it, but I've done a bunch of bowls and utensils here recently, and this thing has been great to use. It came with a bunch of sandpaper, and I started out with 40 grit, eventually moving on to 60 to remove those deep gouges caused by the cut saw head. I then start my standard sanding process and take each piece from 60 all the way to 220 grit, making sure to pop the grain in between with water. I just take my orbital sander and get most of the sanding done on each piece and then use my grinding attachment on the spoons to make sure the heads are nice and sanded. And I then hand sand the corners on all my pieces to break the edge to make sure there's no sharp edges. One thing I forgot to record while I was doing all the sanding was filling in a void in that larger spoon handle. I was using CA glue and just did a bunch of layers and looking back I should have just bought some black CA glue instead I ended up just using clear, and I think it would have looked a lot better with the black, but to each their own. It's been almost six weeks since my last post, which I'm not super thrilled by. My last video did surprisingly well, and I was kind of hoping to keep that momentum, but some of you know I'm unemployed right now, and I've been applying to a bunch of graduate school programs here lately, as well as working on several other projects at the same time. I currently have three small projects done, and one large one I just dropped off, so... I'm doing videos on all those and hopefully you all have something to look forward to. I'm really trying to stay consistent and show you all some cool projects along the way. So I do plan on keeping up this once a week schedule. I'm really trying to get over that 1000 subscriber threshold right now. So fingers crossed I can keep this up. After I finish up sanding, I take some of the mineral spirits to clear off any of the sawdust on the piece and also see if I missed any spots while sanding. And after it's dried, I grab my mineral oil and make sure to coat each piece thoroughly. I came back periodically throughout the day and applied another coat until the pieces wouldn't accept anymore. And this was the finished project. I think they turned out great, and I really love the color of the mesquite being that kind of deep brown amber. 
These are for sale on my Etsy, which is linked below. In total, I have about seven hours into them, which is not too bad for some firewood. Thanks everyone for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you all like, comment, and subscribe for more content. I should be back to my once a week schedule coming up, and I've got a bunch of cooler projects planned. See you all next week.